All right, so when you're factoring quadratics or any polynomial of any size, if you're factoring, there's some rules that, that I like for us to go by. And uh, the, you, don't, you won't find this in a book that says the rules of factoring anywhere. It's just kind of the way I think about it. Uh, the first thing that you would always want to look for is GCF. And what's that stand for? Greatest common factor. That's the, that's the muscle behind every type of factoring that you do, the greatest common factor. So that's the biggest number that goes into two factors or two uh, terms in a, uh, or two or three or 12 terms, however how many there are. It's the biggest number that goes into it. Also the largest number of shared variables out of there. Like if you had X squared and X, X would be the greatest common factor of those two. Uh, we'll see plenty of examples today. Out of that. After you've gotten the GCF out of that uh, problem, the next step would be count the terms. And when you count the terms, that's going to tell you what method to go with. Okay? If there are two terms with quadratics, you're going to look at doing differences of squares. And to be a difference of squares, you got to have a subtraction sign in the middle, and then both pieces have to be square things, like 25 is a square number, and x squared is a square variable. you got to have squared stuff going on there to get a difference of squares going on. Uh, so two terms, difference of squares. We'll also pick up some, uh, some sum and difference of cubes later on. I just want to go ahead and put that into our rules. Sum or difference of cubes and that's one of those things it's it's a kind of a uh, memorized pattern that happens with that uh it's cubic so we're really not worried about that too much in this section but still it exists so i want to go ahead and put it in there uh if there are three terms use the x method if you had me for algebra one you've seen the x method before and coach mac uses this uh for, uh, for factoring, uh, if you had Coach McLean or Coach McGee, it's the same idea. Uh, they may not have used the X to organize it with, but I'll show you that today. Uh, really, really easy method to organize your your thoughts so that you can factor. And then, I don't know why I made that blue, but it doesn't matter. Four terms is the other thing that's going on. If there are four terms, we're going to use grouping. And grouping to get our our, uh, our <clears throat> factors done. One thing we got to keep in mind though before we even start doing a problem is make sure it's in descending order with the variables you know, by exponents. So x squared comes first, then plain x, and then plain numbers if it's a trinomial. Uh, so you, descending order makes it easier to factor. Doesn't necessarily mean it's impossible to factor it if it's not in descending order, but it sure does make things a lot more process driven and really easier to do if you can get it make sure it's in descending order before you start so uh we're going to focus first on factoring and then we'll hit uh the solving part at the end here it's the easiest part is the solving part the factoring part's the hard part so let's just factor the polynomials all right example a start something easy like 3x squared plus 12x. Real, real easy. Okay. First thing we should always look for for factoring is what? Like terms or what is the, what's the word? Greatest common factor. It's in descending order already. There are no like terms to combine. That's also a good thing to look for. Uh, so we can go ahead and say, okay, well, the GCF of 3x squared and 12x would be what? 3x. Um, can you send a little uh, weather leads back back and stuff up here? I can. She's checking out. All right. Can, do you mind? It, it doesn't matter who. It doesn't matter. So 3x would be our, uh, our GCF. The key here, what's left in the parentheses. So what would be left in parentheses? 
What times 3x would give me 3x squared? 1x. What times 3x would give me 12x? Plus 4. That's what's left in the parentheses. Then we look at the parentheses and make sure it won't factor any further. Okay, so is anything that x and 4 have in common? No. Is that a difference of squares? Well, it doesn't have a, it's got a square number, but it doesn't have a square on the x, and there's not a minus sign in the middle, so we know we're done. That's the factored form for example A, and that's what we're looking for is the factored form. 3x was a GCF. So what times that would get me back to the original is what's left in parentheses. Okay. So 3x squared plus 12x factors is 3x plus 4. All right, let's do... Uh, Let's do this one. Let's say we had uh, 5x squared minus 13x. Something simple. What would the GCF of that be? Or is there one? Well, first I look at the numbers, 5 and 13. Do 5 and 13 have anything in common? No. So we know there's not a number, but do they share a variable? Yeah, they both got x's. One's got x squared and one's got plain x. So the GCF of x squared and plain x would be x, yeah. So GCF is x. What's left in the parentheses? Good job. 5x minus 13. That GCF is going to be the, the catalyst for everything we do and get the ball rolling for factory. All right. X squared minus 9x plus 20. Okay. <clears throat> Is it in descending order? Yeah, got x squared, then plain x is then 20. Jeremy LeCompte, Kelly LeCompte, Thank and you. Alex Franklin reports the office. All right, so the next thing we should look for after we make sure it's in descending order is the GCF, right? Is there a GCF amongst all three terms? No. The first two terms, yes, but that doesn't help us. It's got to be in all three to be a GCF. So that's, there's no GCF. So the next thing to do is count the terms. How many are there? Three. So that, that implies using which method? X method. All right. So X method, what goes in the top of the X? Anybody remember? Here's how you get it. What's in front of X squared? Technically a one. One times 20 goes up in the top. B, or the middle term, always goes in the bottom. And what we're looking for is for, we need something to multiply to be 20, but add to be negative 9. Need two numbers that do that. Say it again. Positive 5 and positive 4, or... Negative 5 and negative 4, because that get, that multiplies to be positive 20 and adds to be a negative 9. So negative 5, negative 4. All right? Now, because there was a 1 in front of x squared, if you remember from algebra 1, there's a shortcut to getting the factors here. The factors, for because there's a 1 there, the factors go straight to x minus 5 and x minus 4. Kind of the shortcut method of, on that. But you can only do that if there's only a 1 in front of x squared. If there's another number there, you got to do something else. Actually, I have to do grouping. Okay. All right. So x method, multiply on the top, add on the bottom. Apple D. Let's throw 5x squared minus 17x plus 6. <clears throat> These in the order? Check. GCF. 
Now, 5, 17, and 6, all relatively prime to one another. It means they don't have anything in common. So next math, next thing is counts terms. So there's how many terms? Three. So that tells us to use the X method. What goes on the top of the X? 5 times 6 is 30, and then negative 17 on the bottom. So we need two numbers that multiply to be 30 and add to be negative 17. Negative 15, negative 2. Those multiply to be positive 30, add to be negative. Can I go straight to my factors on this one, though? No. There's that 5 in front of the x squared. You can't do that. You've got to do the, the in-between step, which is replace the 17x with 15x and 2x. So I'm replacing this 17 with these two pieces. And then that creates a, a problem that has four terms. And the method for you for factoring when you got four terms is grouping. It does not matter what order you put those two in there in. Just to remind you that that doesn't matter what order. Okay. Group the first two together and get the GCF of those two. Five X. What's that leave in their parentheses? X minus three, good. The second two, and I always just underline so that if we say the one in parentheses, the one underlined. What what do two X and six have in common? Two. Because that's a minus sign in front there, we're going to pull out a negative two. And if I pull out a negative two, what times negative two is going to get me negative two X? X, what times negative two is going to give me a positive six? Negative three. Notice that those parentheses match. If they don't, something ain't right. Okay, something didn't work right. Okay, so the parentheses here have to match. And then our factors are then 5x minus 2, x minus 3. Is this ringing a bell with most of you, hopefully? If it's not, it's not that, it's not a overly crazy concept. All right, let's look at this one. X squared plus 8X plus 12. GCF? Not one. X method, 12 and 8. Four and three. It multiplies to be 12, but it adds to be 7. 6 and 2, F. Can I go straight to my factors here? Why can I do that? There's an understood 1 in front of X squared. When there's a 1 there, I take that shortcut and go straight there instead of having to do that grouping stuff. 6 plus 6, X plus 2. That's the factored form. We can get the factored form. The solving part's going to be the easiest thing we do. The factored form has got to be right, though. All right. Do another. 5n squared plus 10n minus 315. What do we got on this GCF of 5, so we're going to pull that out first. So divide everybody by 5, put the 5 out in front. So it's going to be n squared plus 2n minus 63. Now, once we get the GCF out, it's just hanging out. It's going to ride along till, till something happens. Okay, we look at what's left in the parentheses and say, can we factor that further? Well, it's a trinomial, so I'm going to try to do the X method on it. So negative 63 add to be positive 2. Multiply to be negative 63 and add to be positive 2. 
So knowing your multiplication tables makes this a lot easier. Well, multiplies V63, uh, 9 and 7. 9 and 7 are how far apart? Two apart. So we just got to get the signs right. 9 and negative 7, yeah. Now, I've factored out the GCF. Since I've factored out the GCF, what's technically in front of N squared now? 1. So can I take my shortcut? Yeah, yeah absolutely. That's one of the things uh, in Algebra 2. I'm going to emphasize anytime you can take a shortcut to make you know life a little quicker, you know, get get the easy parts done. We're going to try to emphasize using that. Okay. So there's our factored form for example F. Well, G. 12x squared minus 28x minus 24. First things first. GCF of 4, 4 goes into 12, 4 goes into 28, and 4 goes into 24. Why not 6? Because the 28, 6 doesn't go into 28. 6 is bigger, but it doesn't go into 28. Uh, then we think bigger things that go into 12. 12 doesn't go into 28 either. So so 4 is the biggest one. That's going to leave us 3x squared minus 7x minus 6. And then we try to factor what's left in the parentheses. You won't always be able to factor that, but, you know, the Kind of the lesson today is about factoring quadratics, so you kind of figure you're going to be able to today. So, X method. What goes up top? Mm -mm. Negative 18. 3 times negative 6, and then negative 7 in the bottom. First times last. And then need something that multiplies to be negative 18 and adds to be negative 7. Negative 9 and 2, good job. Can I take my shortcut on this one? Oh, man, no, I can't. So I've got to do the grouping stuff. So I need to replace the 7x with the negative 9x and the 2x. Doesn't matter what order I put that in. I just kind of try to think logically, okay, I know 3 has something in common with the 9, so I'm going to put the 9x first. And then that would be plus 2x and minus 6. The 4 is still technically hanging out there. We're not really doing anything with the 4, but just letting it ride along. Then we group. First two together, 3x squared and negative 9x. Three and what else? Both got an X, right? So that's going to leave X minus 3. What do the second two have in common? Kind of two. Positive or negative? Positive. This sign right here is going to tell you which one to pull out. If it's a positive there, it's going to be a positive you pull out. If it's a minus there, it's going to be a negative you pull out. Plus 2. That's going to leave X minus 3. I'm using brackets here to just differentiate between... What's what? The factored form then is the 4 hanging out in front, and then the factors x minus 3, 3x plus 2. It doesn't matter what order you put those x minus 3 and that 3x plus 2 in. But it is common practice to put the number or the GCF out in the front. But it doesn't matter. If you put 3x plus 2 and x minus 3, that's fine. Doesn't matter. Okay, so we a lot of X method here. Going to be using that quite a bit for a while. Let's look at this one. X squared minus 9. GCF? No. How many terms? Two with a minus sign in the middle. That should tell us, okay, this is probably a difference of squares. 
So we check it to make sure it is. And what we're thinking is, okay, what's squared minus something else squared? So what squared is going to give me x squared? x, what squared is going to give me 9? 3. If you can rewrite it like that, that means it's a difference of squares. And the factors for that are what? Does anybody remember? If you don't, one's a plus, one's a minus. Whatever is squared in the front, whatever is squared in the back. One's a plus, one's a minus. Doesn't matter which one you make a plus, which one you make a minus. Or what order you put those in. One's a plus, one's a minus. Four X squared minus twenty five. Okay. Well, is there GCA? No. How many terms? Two with a minus sign in the middle. So that must we gotta think, okay, well, what do I know about the numbers four and twenty five? They're square numbers. So I'm thinking, okay, this is probably a difference of squares. So I'm going to think this. What squared gets me 4x squared? 2 and an x. What squared is going to get me 25? 5, right? If you can rewrite it like that, that means it's a difference of squares. The factors are easy. 2x in the front. Five in the back, plus minus. And you're factoring a difference of squares. Forty nine X squared plus forty two X plus nine. GCF? No. 49 and 42 has something in common, but 9 doesn't with those. Uh, 9 and 42 do, but 9 and 49 do not. So there's not a GCF. Uh, so, how many terms are there? Three. Three. So that implies using what method? X method. What number goes on top? 49 times 9. Okay, so that's going to be 81 plus 441. How much? 441. 441. Big number. And then 42 on the bottom. All right, big numbers like this, these, these become difficult, right? You got to look for some clues to help you. What do we know about the numbers 49 and the number 9? What's special about those two numbers? He put this right after differences of squares for a reason. What do we know about 49? It's seven squared, right? And what's nine? Three squared, okay? So 441 is the product of two square numbers. So it's a square number. I wonder what the square root of 41 is, or 441 is. You might know. You got a calculator, use it. 21. 21, oh. 21 times 21 is 441. What's 21 plus 21? 42, okay? Using those clues and some number sense, that's what I'm trying to impart to you here, is that if you've got square numbers that you're working with, I bet there's something to do with square numbers in how you work it. That's, that's the trick that I'm trying to show you here, is that that's probably what's going on. Now, can I use my shortcut? No, don't have a one in front of x squared. So I gotta do the long way of factoring this, but, the numbers shouldn't be too bad. Because when I group that first 
group together, 49 and 21 have what in common? Seven. Seven goes into 49. Seven goes into 21. They both have an X, so we pull an X out as well. Uh, so that'd be 7X plus 3. And then the second group has what in common? 3 goes into 21. 3 goes into 9. So plus 3. 7X plus 3. My factors then, 7X plus 3. And another 7X plus 3. One's the stuff in front, one's the stuff in parentheses. Or I could write that as 7x plus 3 squared. Either of those ways of factoring works for that. What that's called is a perfect square trinomial because it, it works out. The reason it's called a perfect square trinomial is because it factors as the same two factors twice, you know, the same factor twice. That's a perfect square trinomial when it does that. So you got to look for that. All right. A couple of more, and then we'll get into solving. Negative uh, 16n squared plus 12n. Go back, pick up an easy one or two here. First thing we look for, greatest common factor. So 16 and 12 have what in common? Two. Four is bigger. Uh, six goes into 12, but it doesn't go into 16. Eight goes into 16, doesn't go into 12. So I think four is the biggest one. Now, here's the thing that it's a best practice type thing that it makes it better if when you pull that GCF, if that leading coefficient is negative, pull the negative with the GCF. That makes things work a little bit better. So I'm going to pull the negative four. What else do they have in common? N. And that's going to leave what in parentheses now? What times negative 4n gets me negative 16n squared? Positive 4n. What times negative 4n gets me positive 12n? Negative 3. A minus sign in there. And then we look at the parentheses and say, can I factor this any further? And the answer should be no. So anytime you see that leading coefficient, that first number in front of the x squared or n squared or whatever letter is squared, you want to pull, pull out a negative GCF there. That, that makes things work better. Do minus 8x plus Multiply to be 13, add to be negative 8. Uh-oh. Negative 13, negative 1. That's the only things that multiply to be 13, right? Or positive 13, positive 1. Neither of those add to be negative 8. So this is what's called prime. Or you might see cannot be... Those, those are not going to happen much in today's uh, practice that you're going to have, but important to know that that exists, especially as we progress through the uh, rest of the chapter. Okay, so if you, if you exhaust all the factors of the top number and none of them add to be the bottom number, uh, then it's considered prime or you say it cannot be factored. Uh, that's the same thing. All right. Let's talk about solving, again, something you've done before. The zero product property. That's the uh, property that allows us to do this. Uh, if two or more factors, same section here, uh, or sections, uh, two or more factors, multiply, to be zero, to not hmm. find of the internets. 
Let's try this. There we go. We got juice now. All right. So if two or more factors multiply to be zero, then at least I'm going to go ahead and write it and then I'll get it connected. One of those factors is zero. It could be all of them. Okay. Could be all of them. Uh, we're going to take the worst case scenario that all of them are zero. Okay. Uh, and that this is the property that allows us to solve an equation by factoring. Uh, also the same property that allows us to solve it by quadratic formula later on. Okay. So if you're using the zero product property, you know, the first thing you want to do is get the equation equal to zero. You don't have it equal to zero, you can't factor it yet. Okay, so we got to factor it when it's equal to zero and then factor it if possible. Once today, you're going to be possible to factor. You should be able to factor every one of them you have today. As we progress through the chapter, uh, we're going to get some other methods that are uh, legal to use on, on the quiz and stuff uh, that even if it won't factor, you can, you can do it. Uh, but even if it does factor, you can also do that method too. So factoring. Uh, is the next step. And then after you get it factored, you set each, <coughs> excuse me, factor equal to zero and solve. So let's take an example or two. And I think, you know, once the factoring is the, the muscle of this, it's the hardest part. The solving is the easy thing. It's like one or two step problems. It's, it's nothing that you're going to have any problem with. So let's just do a couple examples. Let's say we had something like this. 3x squared is equal to negative 12x. I don't know what letter we're on here. M. M. Yes, ma'am. All right. Thank you. All right, so it's, is it equal to zero? No. How could we get it equal to zero? Move what? Add 12x to both sides, right? Those cancel. And there we have 3x squared just about done, Tucker's not anything. And then you'll have work day tomorrow, but this is what I'm gonna show them. That's what they're doing. So. All right, so 3x squared plus 12x on the left side. Nope. Can't combine terms because they're not like terms. This is an x squared and this is a plain x. So they don't go together to make 15x squared or 15x 15, 15 to the third. They're, it's 3x squared plus 12x. That's going to be a big thing. you got to make sure you don't combine things that are not like terms. Do combine things that are, but be careful of that. So once you get it equal to zero, though, it's back to what we did just a minute ago, factory. So the first thing that you would want to look for here is a GCF on that side. 3x is what they have in common. We pull a 3x out to the front, get x plus 4. This is the same problem from example A. Once we get here, where we got it equal to 0, the factoring part's the same thing we did in example A. I used the exact same problem. Then, once you get it factored, you set each factor equal to zero. So we got two factors. We got 3x and we got x plus 4. What makes them a factor that has to be set equal to zero is the fact that they've got a variable. 
If it doesn't have a variable, then it's you just drop it. But if it's got a variable, it's got to be set to equal to zero. So we're setting 3x equal to zero and x plus 4 equal to zero. Solve them. x is equal to zero. x is equal to negative 4. Those are our two solutions to this quadratic. You could take those back to the original problem, plug them in. They work. Okay. Let's say we had this. x squared uh, minus 5x plus 20 equals 4x. What do we do from there? Subtract 4x to get it equal to, to what? Zero. And I'm going to subtract 4x from its like term. The negative 5x that's in the middle. That's going to give me x squared minus 9x plus 20 is now equal to zero, which allows me to do factoring. How do we factor that? It's the same problem as example C. Once you get here, it's the same pro it's the same thing we've done. What multiplies to be 20 and adds to be negative 9? Negative 4, negative 5. Can I take my shortcut to factor it? Yeah. Nothing in front of that, so x minus 4, x minus 5. <coughs> I've got two factors that have variables, so I'm going to go ahead and set those equal to 0. And then just solve each one of those. x equals 4. X equals 5. If you take those back to the original problem, plug them in for X one at a time, then they work. Those are the correct answers for that one. Okay. So it just takes getting equal to zero, and then the factoring happens the same way. Last step is set each factor that has variables equal to zero. Okay. All right. Let's get a one more here. And we'll be done for the day. I'll quit bugging you guys. <coughs> Example. Let's say we had um let's say we had three x squared minus twenty x plus six is equal to two x squared minus 3x. A little bit more difficult one. Got a lot more going on. Obviously more pieces. And hold on, that's a negative 2x squared. I didn't put my negative sign. It's a negative 2x squared. I'm sorry. Okay. So we're going to solve this by factoring. That's the game that we're playing today. Uh, what's the first thing we should try to be doing? Zero. Getting zero on one side. Well, this side has three pieces, and that side has two pieces, so it seems like it'd be better to move stuff from that side over here, right? Shorter, right? So that's what we're going to do. How do we move the 2x squared? Add. Add. And then how do I move the 3x? We can do two steps at once, right? I'd add 3x, right, to its like terms. So you got to line them up with their like terms. Make sure you put them with their like terms. There's the zero we need. What's on the left side now? Minus 17x plus 6. Example D. From there, it's factoring. X method, 30 on top, 
negative 17 on the bottom. It's negative 15 and negative 2. We've already done this problem, so the factoring, just going through that. That work again here. Group the first two together. 5x and 5, 5x squared and negative 15x have 5x in common. That leaves x minus 3. 2x and 6 have 2 in common. Because that's a negative 2, I'm going to pull out a negative 2. And give me x minus 3 in parentheses. The factored form, 5x minus 2, x minus 3. And then set each one of those equal to zero. X is two fifths. This was a little easier. Three. But again, you're gonna you'll get two answers there because it's quadratic squared so you get two answers if it's cubic you get three or should have three and then sometimes they might be repeated uh, solutions you get the same answer more than once but uh, you can take those back to the original problem plug them in and it, they check they do work okay so it's not a um, not unlike any equation that you've ever done it's the same okay all right so it takes uh factoring that's the main main thing here today uh, and tomorrow's work day. You got some time today as well. Uh, and just getting getting ready for this. I mean, it's this is not rocket science. It's algebra two. So page two fifty five through three through thirty seven odd. And page two sixty three through three. Three through thirty-nine. Odd. Yeah, those are those sections about factoring, solving. 